This project is about a partnership between the Department of Environmental Protection and the City of New York Department of Education to retrofit fixtures in our bathrooms to save water across the city in response to a repair that they need to make in the Delaware watershed. And as part of that repair, we'll have to shut the Delaware aqueduct down. As a result of that, we released a water demand management plan where we were hoping to save 25 million gallons of water per day. We realized one of the biggest things we could save a lot of water on was replacing old toilet fixtures. We looked at the Department of Education and specifically the 500 largest Department of Education buildings that we can find. We are the largest school system in the United States with over 1.1 million students and over 1,300 facilities. Many of which were constructed before the mid-1990s. And so we had partnered with an engineering firm to survey these buildings, find out how many inefficient fixtures we have. And we believe there are about 30,000 fixtures that could be replaced in Department of Education facilities alone. And we estimate this could save around 4 million gallons of water per day. Our goal is to retrofit 500 New York City school buildings throughout all five boroughs. We have the opportunity now to improve our bathrooms and improve service delivery to students in our schools. We have a very limited maintenance budget here at the New York City Department of Education and the opportunity for someone else to come in and help us improve the condition of our facilities was really a home run for us. Department of Education didn't have the funds to carry out this massive amount of work themselves. So DEP provides the funding and Department of Education had an existing jock contract that they could use to carry out the labor. They have to open up the walls, replace piping, replace shutoff valves, all that stuff. And what's impressive is that we've been able to do all this work while the schools are still open. So once we got this project really rolling and we got a whole process down, my colleague John McLaughlin of the Office of Ecological Services came to us and said, I got a grant and I'm hoping to build an oyster reef in Jamaica Bay. I've seen research where we've used porcelain before as the base of the oyster reef. You know, I'd really like to use the porcelain in this project. The oyster reef, eventually, once fully constructed, will continue to improve water quality in Jamaica Bay. And so we thought it was the perfect program to see if we could use crushed porcelain. There was a lot of logistical issues that we had to make sure that we were delivering the exact product for constructing an oyster reef. It's not just that you can smash a toilet and, and throw it in the bay. We had to make sure that there was no metal or plastic parts on the toilets and we really wanted to make sure that the porcelain was as clean as possible. So it's very important that they power wash the toilets before they smash it. We also wanted a very particular size. We didn't want anything too small. We didn't want anything too large. And the contractors were great in responding and saying, okay, here's how we'll do it. They've been able to sort of change their process to make it better for us. After our contractors process the material, they deliver them to this site, the Fountain Avenue landfill, where DEP employees spread them out on blue tarps. And the purpose of that is to get them in the sun, get them rained on, to get the porcelain as clean as possible before we put them into Jamaica Bay, which is right over there. What's interesting about the Fountain Avenue landfill is a landfill from 1961 to 1985, and now that land is making a transformation, you know, going from a trash dump to a nature preserve. It's very similar to the project that we're trying to accomplish here, where we have close to four and a half, five thousand toilets that would have gone to a landfill. Instead, we're able to process it and build an oyster reef in Jamaica Bay. So once we got enough porcelain that we needed for the oyster reef, we were hoping to find another project that we could use the porcelain in. And that's where our Office of Green Infrastructure came in, where they're building thousands of right-of-way bioswales throughout the city. Bioswales are a modular stormwater management device that bring in stormwater runoff from the curb of the street. There's an inlet and outlet that allows stormwater to run in from the curb and gutter. So the water will come into the bioswale soak in through a specially designed engineered soil and then settle into the bottom, which provides storage for the water. This allows the water to go in and infiltrate to the ground as it would naturally. The goal is to collect as much stormwater as possible 
prevent it from going to the catch basins, which in turn prevents combined sewer overflows, which are hazardous to the water quality of New York City Harbor. Currently, they use crushed stone as the base substrate in the bioswales. We looked at our material, we looked at the stone, it's very similar. Ben and Vlada approached us with their water demand management program. They were collecting toilets from the schools and of course crushing the porcelain, and they had a lot left over. And so the idea was, why don't we use crushed porcelain instead of the stone? It is very similar in spec to the size of our stone and the quality of our stone. So we wanted to make sure that it would work in our bioswales first. It has to create a lot of void spaces underground that will be able to contain the stormwater that infiltrates into the bioswale. So we had to make sure the aggregate was the right size, to make sure it was the right shape. And then it took lots of coordination for the two contractors, the ones that are providing the porcelain and the ones that are building the bioswale, to link up and get their schedules together. The students now are going to have a real-world connection to some of the sustainability messages that we try to teach to them. So when you think about the opportunity that we have to instill these sustainability concepts into our students, it's clearly a win-win for both DEP, the DOE, and most importantly for us, our students. And this whole project is sort of our commitment to make New York City a great city that we can all live in for a very long time. And we're doing it sustainably. We're doing it with uh, materials from across different sustainability programs. It was a really great opportunity to work with other bureaus within the city, using the excess from one program to use in another. This project is really an example of how sustainability should be done. There's so much to like about this program. Our buildings are always going to need maintenance, and if we can have partners that can incorporate education into the process, that's just terrific. That's a home run.